Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey joins us now. Mr. Chairman, thanks for joining us. The situation on the ground uh, in Israel and Gaza is escalating by the hour. What's your reaction uh, to what's going on there? Well, clearly uh, Hamas's uh, rockets attacks into civilian populations uh, is condemnable uh, and, and, and violates all international norms. And so I, I, I certainly condemn those in the strongest possible terms. What? Uh, by the same time. Uh, you know, I, I think that the Israeli and Palestinian political and military leaders have to actively discourage agitators from any further actions that provokes more violence. And also that the Israeli national police has to take steps to lower tensions throughout Jerusalem. What should the United States be doing right now? Generally speaking, the Biden administration has not been deeply engaged. I realize it's relatively early, but what do you want them to be doing? Well, I think to be engaged in and talking to, to both sides uh, and to our allies in the region who may have contacts uh, with the Palestinian Authority and others uh, to say that uh, the violence has to stop, uh, the rockets are terrorism, uh, and uh, that, in fact, all sides have to uh, engage in dramatically lowering the tensions, especially as we are on the verge of the end of Ramadan. Uh, and, uh, and, and in doing so, uh, you know, we commit towards an engagement uh, w with both sides. But right now, uh, this violence begets violence. And so we have to have it dramatically reduced on both sides. Do you want Israel to stop uh, retaliatory strikes against uh, Hamas and Palestinian targets in Gaza? No, listen, there, there's no such thing as unilateral, uh, uh, you know, uh, disarmament. If Hamas is going to continue, continue to fire rockets uh, into innocent civilian areas, then there's going to be a response by Israel. Um, so that, that's, that I, I, I fully understand and support. But I do believe uh, that uh, in Jerusalem, for example, and I certainly applaud the Supreme, the, the Supreme Court of Israel uh, for delaying the decisions that may be forthcoming on one of the issues that has given rise to the challenges about the displacement of Palestinians in certain properties, uh, that uh, at the end of the day, actions like that uh, can lower the tensions. But Hamas should not expect that for so long as they keep firing rockets, there won't be fire back on them. So let's talk about that, because Israel's eviction of six Palestinian families from East Jerusalem is clearly a flashpoint. Israel's Supreme Court, as you note, uh, on Sunday they postponed a hearing on the possible eviction of those six families. What do you say to those who argue that what the Israeli government is doing in East Jerusalem reflects a government policy to drive out Palestinians and entrench Israeli control of Palestinian neighborhoods in violation of international law. Well, first of all, I look forward to seeing what the Supreme Court of Israel decides. It is a democracy, and I want to see what their Supreme Court will decide. Uh, secondly, you know, I have called for, as well as other colleagues, that unilateral actions, uh, including the, the, the unjust uh, evictions and demolitions in East Jerusalem, uh, uh, certainly uh, only heighten tensions and move actors away from further direct negotiations. And so uh, I would hope that the Israeli government would cease those uh, so that we ultimately can get to a point that we can engage in some real effort uh, to move forward uh, on what will ultimately be, I hope, a two-state solution. But none of this can happen while violence is taking place. Let's turn to the ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline, which has already raised gas prices here in the U.S., more importantly raised questions about the integrity of cyber infrastructure in the U.S. I asked the former director of the National Counterterrorism Center, Michael Leiter, yesterday about it. Take a listen to what he had to say. The U.S. is really behind. We've got a patchwork of 50 states on privacy laws and various cybersecurity. Why is the U.S. so behind, and what is Congress doing about it? Well, this is a, a, a critical issue. As a matter of fact, the Strategic Competition Act that I passed out of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee 21 to 1 has some significant provisions on the question of dealing with these cyber challenges. Um, and so uh, I think uh, we have uh, neglected 
the reality that the new frontier uh, in terms of conflict will be through cyber. And whether that be by criminal elements, as this one uh, on Colonial Pipeline is supposed to be out of Russia, or whether that be state, state sponsors uh, of cyber attacks, uh, this is the new frontier. And we are behind the new frontier in developing a defense system, uh, not only for pipelines, but our electrical grids and mm -hmm. so much more. And we're going to have to work with the private sector as well to get them fully engaged and understand uh, the stake that they have uh, in uh, building up dramatically their cyber defenses. Take a listen to President Biden uh, when asked if Russia should be held responsible for this malware attack, a uh, ransomware attack. Take a listen. So far, there is no evidence based on from our intelligence people that Russia is involved, although there is evidence that the actors ransomware is in Russia. They have some responsibility to deal with this. What does Russia taking responsibility look like to you? Well, if you have a criminal enterprise operating in your country uh, and ultimately committing attacks on foreign governments and or foreign companies uh, and you do nothing about it, uh, then you're complicit in it. Um, you know, the Russian government has a responsibility within the international order to crack down on criminal, criminal enterprises within its own country. And they should certainly be cracking down on this criminal enterprise unless, in fact, uh, they are allowing them to continue to operate uh, because uh, it has collateral benefit to them. And so, therefore, they have to be held accountable if that's the case. So, in the first instance, I'd be calling upon the Russian government to prosecute uh, you know, this particular uh, uh, criminal enterprise. And, in, uh, and if we end up prosecuting, as we have in others, to give us the individuals who we've prosecuted, unlikely that they will do that, but we should demand that. And in the absence of either them prosecuting or allowing us to prosecute them, then there has to be consequences for a Russian government that allows criminal enterprises to act with impunity. All right. Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey. Thanks for your time today, sir. Good to be with you.